was listening to Stern in the car on the way here, and he's talking about therapy. And that is one thing that really bums me out about people in L.A. They talk about therapy like it's not embarrassing. Now, if your brain's broken and you're considering suicide and you're about to get divorced, okay, go to a brain doctor and see if he can fix him. Fix it. But when you talk to people in L.A., their therapist is like their trainer. And I've had people in L.A. say that because I've been saying therapy is gay for a long time. And they go, they go, uh, well, how's it different from a trainer? You're just getting your brain better. Nah, no. Reading hard books is getting your brain better. Solving problems is getting your brain better. Sitting on a fucking couch and talking about yourself, that's super gay. And I think it makes you less in control over the long run. Uh, Terry Richardson is a friend of mine who I believe still goes once a fucking day. Now, it's sort of like using a calculator. If you always have a calculator in your hand, you'll find yourself, you'll go like 86 times 10. Well, I can do that myself, 860. And then you'll go uh, 86 plus 10. Uh, you know what? Why bother? You're so used to doing anything remotely hard, you do less and less challenging problems with your brain until you're not just doing 80, you're no longer doing 86 times 10 in your head, you're doing 86 times 10 on the calculator, just to be sure. And people do this with lawyers too. They'll go, hmm, should I get into business with the my neighbor who wants to invent dog collars? You could run the math yourself, think about it for three days, have a beer on your porch, and see if you, it still feels like a good idea. But no, people go, I just asked my lawyer. Now, of course, your lawyer is going to say, that's not worth the risk. And he's going to tell you not to do it. So calculators, lawyers, and therapists, what they do after a while is they take away your own sort of libido. And they prevent you from making decisions yourself. And the next thing you know, someone goes, some chick probably goes, so do you like me? Should we take this to the next level? And then you ask some fucking Jewish broad what sh you should do with your life. And of course, she's a bitter cunt who got divorced, so she goes, dump him, dump her, don't get involved, divorce, end it. My buddy, we'll call him S, he went into a couples counseling, and he said, yeah, me and my wife are, are doing kind of badly, and the, the counselor never go to relationship therapy, ever. Any marriage counseling shit is just a segue to divorce. But anyway, he went in there and he goes, uh, yeah, things aren't going great, we want to work it out. And the counselor goes... Um, do you guys fuck when you go on holiday? She probably did say fuck, too, just to sound kind of edgy. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, we fuck like rabbits. And he, she goes, okay, good, we can start fixing this. And then he goes, well, wait a minute. What if I hadn't said that we have sex a lot? And she said, oh, well, we would come up with a plan to dismantle this. And when he told me that, I thought, what the fuck? That's like you go to a priest because you're having trouble with your faith, and he... He goes, well, uh, <laughs> do you beg for, do you, do you apologize to God when you're hungover? Uh, no? All right, well, we're going to have to dismantle this and make you an atheist. I know everyone listening is an atheist, but try to see through that and grasp my analogy here. I think a lot of these fuckers are there to sabotage your relationship. And it happened to my friend Letter B, who um, his girlfriend started seeing a therapist about their relationship. And I think this fucking cunt, the therapist, was bitter. She's probably on her second husband. She probably blew it with her alpha male husband and then had a beta male husband who just, so she had the alpha male husband's money still because they weren't technically living together. They were lying about it. So she has all the, the alimony and the beta male is like, whatever you want, honey, whatever you want. And she resented that. Women don't really like that at the end of the day. They resent it. And she was probably mad at the world. And instead of going, what the fuck have I done? I ruined my life. And now I'm here with this pussy taking someone else's money I'm an idiot. What? I have no authority to be a therapist. I don't think so. I think what she did was said, she said to herself, I'm right. And more people have to join me in this self-sabotage. So anyway, she told B's girlfriend, and he was about to propose to her, by the way. We went out. We were on a, a, at, a at a festival. I can't say. I don't want to give this away. but um, And I was telling him how to propose. Like you go to a place that you guys have in common and you go... Oh, what's under this rock, our favorite rock? What the... And then there's a ring there. I was telling him all that kind of shit, and we were strategizing and how to make it a great memory, and I was saying, 
you know, all my classic proposal stuff. Like, don't get a fancy ring. They're not into that. They don't want cobalt and blood-free diamonds that are, you know, in- intertangled fucking polyurethane <laughs> rubies and chrysanthemums down the side. They want the Disney ring they've been thinking about since they were eight. Just get a gold band with the biggest diamond you can afford. Cap it at 5K. Don't spend fucking 25K, you retard. You go to Paris first class on that. Anyway, I'm telling this guy uh, all this stuff, and he comes back and he's dumped. Because the therapist said, you're not happy. You're in a relationship that you're having doubts about. Dump the guy. That's what my eight-year-old daughter would probably say if she was presented with the conundrum. We're entrusting our entire lives to these people. We're pulling our brains out of our heads and saying, what do you think? And in L.A., it's replendent, if that's a word, with people just confidently handing their brains to a stranger every day. Maybe it's the death of religion. Maybe you used to do that to your priest, and he'd know your dad and your grandfather, and he'd go, oh, yeah, the McKinnises have this problem where when they go on a bender, they wet the bed. I saw this with your dad and your granddad. Solution is stuff a bunch of T-shirts down the front of your pants before you go to sleep or duct tape diapers on. Um, <laughs> but uh, with, these, with the death of, the, of religion, and of course you have these priests now who are bored. I don't, what do priests do all week? I'm kind of new to this, this Christianity thing. You're an expert in one book, and you work one day a week for three hours. No one's calling you up for help with their relationships. So is the rest of the time just... How come they're not all fat? I think that more of them would be fat. I guess they can't watch TV. Anyway... Yeah, just hearing Howard Stern talk about my therapist and oh my my therapist has been away for a month because it's August. Uh, I'm I thought I was in I thought I was together, but now I'm more now I'm more fucked up than ever. That's wrong. You have to swallow your own shit for a while to figure out how it tastes. I know a dude that got dumped by oh, and this is a separate guy. He got dumped by the woman he's going to propose to, and he went on Prozac and stuff. And then next thing you know, he's saying, oh, well, you know, things change. People change. I understand. I understand. She, uh, she didn't want to commit this early. I go, oh, you're not supposed to be okay with it. You're supposed to be barfing and crying and punching the walls, like Billy Bragg says. Uh, in public, he's such a man. He's, he's swearing at the walls with his sore and bloody hands. He's screaming and shouting and acting crazy. But at home, he sits alone and he cries like a baby. That's what you're supposed to go through. And then you go to your friends, and you bore your friends to tears with it. And I think the, the L.A. movie types would go, well, that's why we go to therapy, because we don't want to bore our friends. No, that's what friends, it's a give and take. that Your friend's going through that shit, and you go, okay, we're hearing about Sandy again. Let's fucking plow through. And you, you deliver the same theories you've delivered four times. Well, maybe you should uh, uh, booty call her and see if she's interested, and if not, uh, wait three days without calling her. You're calling her too much, blah, 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 all those simple things. But you know that when you're in that boat, then you can call him and bore him to tears. That's called society. And with all this outsourcing of problems to all these different divisions, we're becoming these fucking weak octopi that just have my brain is handled with this tentacle my uh, fun is handled with this tentacle my sex is handled with this tentacle and we just sit at home like something out of the matrix with all these fucking tentacles sticking out of our head be miserable with your friends suffer be depressed have a bad month shit if you're in a marriage that sucks have a bad year you don't need to have an affair you don't need to have therapy you don't need to work it out with some fucking stranger. And if you do, people in L.A., can you not be so proud of it? It really makes me uncomfortable when I'm sitting in a bar with a dude and he goes, Yeah, well, that's like what my therapist said. He was saying, Ew, it's like when guys say my best friend. Yeah, well, I was at, uh, you know, my wife, my best friend and I, uh, when, your best friend, what are you, Nine? My therapist. And it also means that's the only meaningful conversations they have is with their therapist. Because every time you get remotely philosophical, like discussing infidelity, they'll go, yeah, my therapist was actually uh, quoting the Torah from uh, one of the most ancient uh, scrolls 
that uh, discussed infidelity. So this has been going on for a long time. Thanks for a history lesson from your fucking brain doctor, you loser. Like, if I had a penis disease, I wouldn't be talking about a urologist all the time. Saying, yeah, my, my actually my urologist when he's working on my broken penis uh, was saying that a uh, uh, stitch in time saves nine. And he was saying that uh, you should masturbate or at least ejaculate 20 times a month to prevent prostate cancer. If you said that to someone, they would go, ew, I didn't know your cock was broke. You're not a villain for having a broken penis, but uh, I don't want to hear about it. So talking about your therapist is proudly discussing your broken brain and how unable you are to handle it yourself. That's a situation we all might get in, and I'm sure I should have seen a therapist once or twice in the past. I'm not denying that. But to be so proud of the fact that you go to a brain doctor, I don't get it. It seems embarrassing to me, and it's one of my least favorite things about L.A.